We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Of course, our first major conversation up next. Uh, uh, we have a guest standing by as we discuss this all-important subject. Um, let's quickly remind you that President Mohamed Buhari has said uh, that Nigeria's rapid transition uh, to renewable energy will result in significant job creation uh, with up to 340,000 jobs created by 2030 and up to 840,000 jobs created by 2060. Now, the president said this at the leaders' closed-door meeting on climate change, which held on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. The meeting was convened, convened rather, uh, by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Gutierrez, uh, before the commencement of the COP27, which will hold in November this year. Um, environmental uh, discussions holding at COP27. Buhari renewed the nation's commitment towards ensuring that there was a rapid and, rapid and strategic transition to renewable energy in response to the worldwide efforts for the preservation of the environment. Now, he also stressed that his administration had, in August this year, launched a homegrown, data-backed, multi-pronged energy transition plan, which the country's, uh, is the country's framework in achieving net zero emissions by 2060. Now, that's quite interesting, but we need to get some more uh, insights and analysis of this. We're glad to have joined us uh, to uh, discuss this. Martin Uzuegu, the president of NUE, which happens to be, uh, very interestingly, the National Union of Electricity Employers. I hope I got it right, Martin Uzuegu, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? Uh, on, on this, this energy transition plan as a, a player in the energy industry in Nigeria? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, the energy transition plan uh, is uh, a welcome development and uh, is something that at the front burner, especially in the global world. And of course, it's... Uh, it shouldn't be new to Nigeria because the world has been discussing about it. It's just simply a dynamic uh, uh, energy infrastructure changes. You know, in Nigeria and the world at large, we are, you know, the renewable or non renewable energy sources uh, are being shifted to renewable energy sources. So if Nigeria uh, want to key into it, I think uh, we need to commend them and uh, we believe that it will be done with all sincerity and uh, with commitment that is needed given the right legislative uh, framework. So, but you see sometimes when such uh, uh, plans comes up, one will look at it, the antecedents of uh, those who are you know, spearheading it, uh, looking from where we were coming from uh, during privatization of electricity, uh, what happened nine years after, uh, have we done well after privatizing the industry, uh, nine years after we are still moving around uh, 4,000 megawatts. So based on that, if the commitment to All oh, right, we seem to be having a bit of uh, a network challenge happens from time to time uh, in our climate. But um, I hope that we can get Martin Uzego back, uh, who interestingly happens to be the president of the National Union of Electricity Employees. Uh, energy transition plan is quite an interesting uh, uh, thing. It's not just the beauty of, the, of how it sounds, but it's also the beauty of the idea. Uh, mercy seeing Nigeria transit from uh, its current fossil uh, fuel-based power uh, supply of energy production uh, to a more um, a sustainable, environmentally sustainable model. Uh, though some people, you know, will uh, dispute the fact that these models are, um, are environmentally friendly because they would ask you, okay, if you want to use a wind turbine, you're still going to have to you look for a way to, to in, you know, impute some things that would uh, harm the environment. You want to have solar uh, uh, solar parks, for instance, they also talk about that. But, you know, we're behind as far as the world is concerned on renewable energy. 
um, it's a lot of questions to be asked. But it was interesting to see, you see the Vice President, Professor Yamil Shibajo, um, he, he took a grand tour, let's call it that, you know, of uh, the United States of America. He was at the White House with his uh, American counterpart, Kamala Harris. Uh, the Vice President spoke, uh, gave a speech at that podium, you know, President of the United States, the Vice President, a uh, beautiful podium that we all dream of seeing one day. And uh, he looked quite <laughs> presidential. It was a time for him to really yeah. advance himself as a, a diplo diplomat um, and uh, presidential material. But, but, um, yes. All right. So, but, but if you look at, you know, the concern, at the end of the day is the fact that uh, there's always been conversation. This is not the first time this conversation is on, on a global scale. And of course, because we're part of ourselves, uh, as a global village, a community, everyone is supposed to be concerned and our actions at the end of the day should contribute to protecting it. And we're talking about, you know, carbon now, uh, the reduction of carbon emission uh, to the climate or to the environment, reduction of it at the end of the day. But if, if you look at that uh, particular conversation, I mean, if you're saying that lest we begin to reduce what we're emitting to the environment and, you know, tackle the issue of climate change, it comes back to the issue of development. And if you talk about development for Africa and Nigeria, we haven't really been on top of the front burner, especially. It's a good thing that we're transiting, we're moving, we need to move away you know, from that kind of uh, you know, energy that we're faced with to a clean energy where the environment will be protected. But has Africa and Nigeria really contributed to you know, the pollution of the environment? I mean, talking about the carbon emission, how much of this emission have we put out there, really? as a country, because you would talk about manufacturing and production, but that's it. But if the world is actually moving, then we have to move. The next question would be, is Nigeria really ready? And I'm hoping that we'll have a guest back, you know, to have this conversation, because I, it's I, a lot. I just hope that, you know, uh, it will be so interesting to hear from him about the electricity workers strike, because um, he's directly involved. I just hope that maybe they have not, because in the papers today, they said they're going to turn off the light. So I hope that they've not turned it off where he is, and it has not affected his um, his network. But uh, on a serious oh, no. note, I, I don't think that that might know, be the case. I, I really, really want to even ask him a lot of questions about the the workers' strike action that is about to go return. Is what we see in the papers this morning. Uh, but but back to the energy transition plan. You know, the word uh, transition simply means. Uh, you know, I think it it could also moving from one one thing to another. Um, <laughs> But you know, what are the, the environmental credentials of, of the government of Nigeria? I'm not just talking about the Buhari, Buhari administration, I'm just talking about um, previous administrations. What are the energy credentials? We, even if we go down to the military days, we can start from maybe Abacha's time, let's not go too far. What are the environmental credentials? Um, since Amina Mohammed left the scene and went to the United Nations to you know, you know, uh, re assume her position as uh, Deputy Secretary General. It's been really like a downward. It's been nothing really uh, that you hear. Well, things have been happening, but it, not on the scale to convince me that um, Nigeria is on the path to aggressively, intentionally uh, protect the environment. The reason the global community, you know, COP27 is around the corner, uh, they, they're big on, on climate change, on renewable energy, is to save the environment. But, you know, a country that um, has not even begun to do the needful as far as environmental issues are concerned, uh, I think it's a joke, you know, that we're talking about the energy, energy transition plan. It's a, the biggest joke of the century. I, 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 you know, I laugh each time I hear this. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. You, you cannot be, be saying one thing and then you're doing the opposite, you know, against the thing you're saying you want to do. So I, I, think, I think it just shows... Um, how much of a joke we have, you know, in, in terms of governance in this country. It's like going to say, you know, we want people to come and put their money in the country, but your policies are, are um, not business friendly to the extent that uh, foreign companies who are doing business in Nigeria can't even get their money out, you know. No. So, so, so why, why am I saying it's a joke, Mercy? Um, you have the, the, the problem of gas flaring, which has been an issue for, for years. The, the government has policies on gas flaring. The government has uh, standards on gas flaring, but when you talk about implementation uh, of the measures and the policies to reduce to the minimum agreed acceptable standards, it's not there. 
you have government agencies that are saddled with the responsibility of addressing the issue of gas flaring. It's not there. You go to communities in, in, in not just gas flaring, flaring of, of uh, harmful substances into the atmosphere as a result of um, exploitation of um, uh, uh, fossil fuels. You know, it, it, it's not there. I mean, I, I still lived and worked in Port Harcourt for a long time. If you remember, if you remember uh, there was some advocacy in media, civil society, uh, for government to stop the suit. Now, those, team, those in Port Harcourt, you know, River State, and even if you go to Worry, they have issues there because you have a refinery there as well, uh, where we're advocating for this. But the state government was receiving a, bit, a lot of the advocacy. But the truth was that the federal government was the one that had the power to ensure that uh, the emission of harmful substances into the atmosphere, thereby affecting those who reside in oil producing areas, was, was addressed. It was it stopped at the buck. Uh, uh, it, stopped, it was with the federal government. And guess who the Minister of Petroleum Resources was and is? The, the president of Nigeria who's saying these things at the UN. So the, the box stopped at his table and the federal government did nothing. You know, and as practically, practically, if you look at everything, really has not done anything to address the, the uh, PM 2.5 emission we call suit that is affecting people and is, 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 is harming. People have died. If you look at Mercy, the the incidences of upper uh, respiratory tract infections in places like, uh, where you have you know, crude oil production, all right? Messi is, is quite high. I'm taking time because I'm passionate about environmental issues. Mm -hmm. it, it's quite high. So you are the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Your government is superintending over an oil and gas industry that is exploiting resources to the detriment of the lives of people. And then you're going to talk about energy transition plan. Are you, are we joking or what? No, but, but Kofi, I mean, uh, you have raised very uh, resilient points and perspective right there, which is very valid. And we'll constantly say, like you have said, that it's, it's a practical joke. Okay. So um, the big question that I'm asking, and I'm hoping that we have our guests back just before we call it a wrap. Are we ready for the global transition because the, the world leaders, I mean, the, uh, the globe, everyone is moving and reaffirming their commitment for a carbon neutral economy or world in 2050 and 2060. Now, I mean, because of the agreement that was entered in, in 2015, uh, the Paris Agreement, okay. which Nigeria is part of. And so this is not the first time, like I said, when international players come together, there's usually always agreement, but they come together and they say, hey, there's need for global prosperity and development. But usually countries would always act in their interest. And we say, when you say we're facing climate changes or climate crisis, and uh, we begin to have commitment and discussions around, let's pro protect the environment, let's protect you know, the globe so we don't wake up one day and uh, we're extinct, everywhere's gone because of human activities over time. You begin to ask yourself, in terms of carbon emission, the question I would ask is, how much is Africa emitting and how much is Nigeria contributing? Because at the end of the day, it brings us back you know, to industry, but really, Nigeria being part of the agreement, the Paris Agreement 2015, not also forgetting that we're very dependent on oil, you know, uh, for, uh, it's an oil economy. Uh, the, our earnings highly dependent on oil. So what becomes of us when we begin to get into this kind of agreement? Are we making plans, you know, um, for revenue generation? Because it would mean that we would have to move away from the use of petrol I mean, fossil fuel here. And so there would be electric cars, everything would be uh, electrical and all of that. We're trying to move away to a cleaner technology and energy where we don't have to be using fuel and what have you. Are we really ready in all sense if we have been part of this agreement in 2015 and world leaders are committing, which means we're committing. As, as much as it sounds very brilliant and the world is moving towards it, because what it will mean is that um, you know, in terms of development, for every time you have all of that, we, we will be, you know, uh, going behind, lagging behind in terms of development. We're not even emitting anything. What are we really producing? How much of the emission are we contributing? But it is what it is. It's the discussions that we're having now. Yeah. And so I, I really don't know if we're already thinking ahead because we might probably be thinking that 2050 is far off or, you know, 2030 is, is far off. But we're very close.
And if up until 62 years, and I mean, we're going to be talking about the Nigerians' independence, I mean, the fact that we have been uh, a sovereign nation for 62 now, how many more years do we have to begin to think about diversifying and depending on clean oil when we know that we earn from, you know, um, what's it called again? Petrol. And if the world is moving away from the uh, use of petrol, are so we, do we really, have a market? Are we really earning Kofi, from it imagine, today? <laughs> no, because Kofi, it's all wiped out, wiped oil, out by the, by the uh, And you're moving away from it. Deficit. There will be no need for it. So who will buy? It's like you say you have rice, and people say we're not eating rice any longer. We're moving away from rice to beans. I, th I, I think, I think that the government should be really, really very much more concerned uh, about going broke, I mean, shutting down, say, Monino go day again. When the Monino world... Monino... He no day now, but, I mean, at least they see something. Uh, when the world finally moves on from, you know, fossil fuel, uh, you know, driven economies, you know, some have said it's not possible, but uh, totally. But we, 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 but, but we see we see the move towards, um, uh, for instance, electric vehicles. Um, uh, test, you know, we talk about Tesla a lot, and Elon Musk and what he's doing. But there are others. You know, uh, Donald Trump is touting the fact that uh, I'm sorry, uh, Joe Biden, one of the recent economic uh, figures and data released, you know, said, "See, we are moving forward." There's been multi-million, multi-billion dollar investment by American you know, vehicle manufacturers in uh, the electronic vehicle segment or electrical vehicle segment. So we've seen uh, movement in that direction. The Chinese Asians are really also moving very fast. Um, so uh, for me, greater, greater danger will be how will the government survive? You know, I mean, you, you've not proven the capacity to manage what you have to create an efficient energy sector, you know, uh, a transparent energy sector, you know, and then you're talking about transiting. What are you transiting from? You know, it's a shame, really. You see, this this government and environmental matters are like this. It's like night and day. You know, when you talk about the Nigerian government, you talk about um, environmental matters, it's like night and day. You see, the environment in Nigeria is like a goose that lays the golden egg. And the federal government of Nigeria, led by President Buhari, who is the president and minister of petroleum resources, is like that farmer who says, I must take all the egg, and doesn't take care of the goose. So you have the government and then the, the international companies who it partners with or who, who it licenses to exploit uh, the nation's crude oil resources, hydrocarbon fuels, and all that. And there's, they're not taking care of the environment. We look at the plethora of oil spills in the Niger Delta, which is the most polluted delta in the world. You know, livelihoods have been affected. Mercy, people who used to fish can no longer fish. People who used to farm can no longer farm. You know, they went and launched the Ogoni cleanup. Uh, and where is the Ogoni clean up today. Like our people on, on Twitter will say, our young people will say it's in the mud. <laughs> it's in the mud. That's what they say. They'll say it's, it's water water. <laughs> Where is the Ogoni clean up today? Since Amina Mohammed packed uh, things, like we say in, in this part of the Ongongo, and left to UN, you know, it's been like this. So what are you talking about? You can't give what you don't have. So, so you know, when, when you talk about the federal well, government... We've been told that we have a guest. We have a guest back. All right. Uh, let's go back to uh, Martin Ozoegu, uh, president of NUE which is the National Union of Electricity Employees. Uh, uh, Mr. Ozoegu, are you there, please? Can you hear us? Ma Martin, can you hear us, please? Unfortunately. All right. Uh, apparently, I guess isn't back. So, so Mercy, as we're saying, you know, uh, and, and then even the, the, the fact that, you know, you have resources, all right? Natural gas, natural gas alone. Uh, this is what several economies are looking for to power, you know, their, their, their equipment to ensure that they can, you know, uh, provide electricity to their, uh, to their citizens. We have natural gas that will last us years, abundant natural gas resources trapped beneath the ground. And till today, this government has not been able to utilize the natural gas resources to be able to provide Nigerians with stable power supply. So we're told that Martins is back. Uh, Martins, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, uh, yeah, Martin is a good, yeah. Thank you very much. So um, what are your thoughts on this energy uh, uh, transition plan as advanced by the federal government? Do you see it being uh, uh, feasible, given some of the things that we're, we're complaining about on the program this morning? So I can't hear you. I can't hear you now. Can you please repeat the question? 
feasible is it is this energy transition plan bearing in mind the challenges we have in our energy sector today in terms of power supply uh, the federal government wanting to move away from um, you know oil and gas powered energy provision power provision power supply to a cleaner environmentally friendlier model do you think this is going to be possible um, bearing in mind the challenges we have in our environment well, I, I think it will, it will be possible, just like I said, if the government have the commitment and sincere in their program. You know, uh, moving into the energy transition is a way of increasing the capacity of the existing generating power in Nigeria. And equally, help to reduce the climatic uh, you know, changes that we are experiencing in Nigeria and globally. So I believe that uh, if government be able to remove the bottleneck and equally bring the stakeholders who are in this business to the round table to discuss about it, that will go a long way in sanitizing the energy sector in Nigeria. However, we are the mindful the challenges that we are facing during privatization up to this moment. Gas has been the, the source of energy. It has about 70% of uh, energy source that generates electricity. Yes, we have hydro. But I think it's time for us to diversify. Moving into renewable energy, more of renewable energy. Uh, like the solar, we have abundant uh, you know, sun in our system. Like using the wind, you know, which is equally uh, predominant in Nigeria, I will equally have to harness the opportunity of using biomass. You know, and these are some of the areas we could move into. But we need to have a legislative framework that will work towards ensuring that the development and sustainability of this plan is achieved. These are the increasing... Really out of time, but I wish we, were, we had you earlier. ...that are supposed to work in this sector. Martin. Rather than them moving into further privatization, which would then reduce the number of workers, and that is what we are doing. You can recall privatization after nine years. We are still talking about 4,000 megawatts. Martin, even can you hear me? We are, Hello, yeah, Martin. Has not even Martin, can you hear me? Hello? Why we were able to protest and picture the government? Well, uh, uh, Martin, if you can hear me, can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so it has to be a two way conversation now. Uh, we are really out of time, but I like the things that you have said. But to be very realistic, it's not about whether or not there's privatization or no privatization, what's going on. The fact that your country, Nigeria, our country, is getting into agreement that would mean that we're ready to move away, uh, we, you know, cut down uh, carbon emission. When we know that we're highly dependent on, uh, you know, crude for earnings, are we really ready? We're getting into all of these agreements, you know, with other countries of the world and saying we want to reduce, we want to stop, uh, you know, the uh, emission of, you know, carbon into the environment to help manage the issue of climate crisis that the world is faced with. And so are we really being very honest and we understand what we're getting into because we haven't been great with the issue of diversifying the economy. I mean, 1960, 66 up until now, we have still been talking about diversifying the economy. Yes. I could put it that as far as we are concerned, Nigeria is not ready. Even though that is something that, that could be done, and we believe that is the best way to go in terms of having a sustainable energy development. We have abundant gas in this country, but we are flaring it. 
And all these things are looking to the atmosphere, creating a climatic changes. We have water, which if government improving the hydro energy generation, we can have more generation coming from there. We have solar. We have wind. Even government can equally move into nuclear energy. So all these things are in abundance in Nigeria. So but if the government doesn't have the finance, and if they doesn't have the capacity in terms of having a legislative framework that we deal with it decisively, the sincerity, and equally putting the right people in the right position that will drive this process, everything will come back to square one. So, but if we do all this thing, I think we are putting Nigeria in a better place in the country where the economy can be developed through energy transition. So I believe it's doable, and I believe that it's the best way to go, but at first, we must put the right person in the right position, we must have the sincerity of purpose, we must be committed, and we must do it with open heart and open mind. Bring all the stakeholders involved. To discuss about it in the round table. All right. Uh, Martin Zuzwego, thank you so much for your time. I, I hate to interrupt uh, you because I'm totally enjoying your, your submission. But because of time, and we apologize for the network challenges earlier, we definitely should have you here uh, sometime next week. But thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll talk about the strike maybe next time we have you. And uh, have a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. All right, uh, uh, it's time to talk football. Uh, Super Eagles were part of the international break, and we'll talk about that when we come back right on.